You are listening to Backstage Pass Podcast, hosted by Sam Trigwell and brought to you by Thomas. Hello, Kate Truscott. How are you? Hello, Hannah Trigwell. Is that right? That is right. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's, uh, it's early morning in Nashville, so I'm great. So you are the general manager and brand True. partnership manager. At yes. <laughs> uh, the Kevin Lyman Group. What's the the backstory? Oh, give give you the tea. Um, give us the tea. So, <laughs> um, Kevin Lyman is the the genius who created the Vans Warped Tour. For those who don't know, so amazing. Uh, back in, I mean, I was still in high school, so it was like the mid '90s when we started. I started working for him. The first time I went on Warped, I actually did. I didn't know anything. I'd never heard of it. I had no idea what it was. I'd been out with my uh, my chemical romance for a few months at that point, and, our, and the manager came to me and was like, "We need you to get ready for warp tour. You gotta have a like get a tent ready and all that stuff." And I was like, "I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> what do you mean by get a tent? Like a like a sleeping tent?" Uh, and eventually, we figured out what I needed to do, and uh, I went on on warp with my chem in '05, and then. Um, from there, I made made friends with some of the people that that ran the tour. And a few months later, when they did the second Taste of Chaos, the the team called me and, and asked if I would come on Taste of Chaos because the band had um, gone into the studio to make the Black Parade, which we all know took forever, but resulted in a really incredible record. So yeah. I was one of the many people that keeps the ship moving, so to speak, uh, on Warped. It's a ton of work, yeah. but it was always really, really fun. And I mean, some of my closest friends in the world are people that I met and worked with for years on, on Warp. So, I mean, you don't really realize how hard you're working. I, I never did until like it's over and then you realize like how tired your body is. You go to get a pedicure and they're like, <laughs> oh God, are you okay? Like, where have you been? And you're like, ah. <laughs> Sounds like it's a really fun job do you enjoy it I do I do I've always um I've always loved what I do um you know I like any job it definitely it has its moments where you're just like but (laughs) for the most part it's really fun I mean my job specifically with sponsorships was like is but on warped at least was you know go out and find companies that want to access our audience and then help them figure out how to do that effectively and then manage it on the road. So like if I've done my job properly in the office year round, by the time we're out on the road, it's just sort of like putting out fires as they happen or sort of maintenance. Like it's kind of on autopilot by then. You know, it's funny. People are like, oh, you travel everywhere. I'm like, yeah, I've seen every parking lot in America. (laughs) it's It's not like I get to like, (laughs) <laughs> like have this great cultural experience in every city we go to. But, you know, I've I've met the best people that I'll probably ever know out on the road. And that tour specifically is so, uh, you know, people talk about it like it's summer camp because it is. Like the way that it's set up, you have to either like embrace it and like get on board and do all of the group activities and stand in line for catering and all of the things Mm. or like you're just trapped in your bus and and if you're bored you're on your like that's on you because there was plenty going on kevin tells this story from like way back in the day when uh he had a sponsorship with target way before my time late 90s i think and um you know people were like oh target like that's so not punk like you're selling out whatever (laughs) and um if if i'm not mistaken it was tim armstrong who kind of came to his defense and was like There's nothing more punk than taking corporate money and using it to do what you want to do. So, like, back off. And I've always kind of thought about it that way, like, that we're taking, we were taking corporate money, and yes, we were were stewarding it responsibly, but we were doing what we wanted to do with it. We were throwing a party that we wanted to throw, and we were creating a space for, you know, kids that were us, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and as we got older, it w- we saw a lot of like generational fans coming in. You know, we saw a lot of parents bringing their kids in. Yeah, I can A imagine. lot. <laughs> we had 
a lot of generational fans. And there came a time in the later years where I would approach people and be like, hey, like, ma'am, do you know that there's like, there's a parent's tent over here that you can go hang out in that might be more comfortable for you? And she was like, I'm here to see Yellow Card. Like that's, <laughs> like, I, would, I got told that more often than not. And I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Well, I want to do some quick fire questions, but I feel like you've answered some of them, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Rock or pop? Rock. You sure? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the hard yes. <laughs> I mean, pop, I'll take pop, but like not if, that, if these are my Not choices, if there's rock. <laughs> yeah. Chips or crisps? Chips. This may be lost in translation though, because in the UK no, it's not. I mean fries. You mean fries. Like, crisps would be like potato chips. Right. Definitely crisps. Fair enough. No, definitely chips. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Music or management? Management. Only because I can't play anything. I'm quite interested in the role, the the brand partnership management. What yeah. what does that yeah. what does that look like on a day-to-day basis? For me, it it's always been about the event, right? So I think um you know, I'm, I'm selling an event. I was selling Warp Tour or I was selling Mayhem or I was selling Country Throwdown or whatever. So really you're selling that thing as a whole. Yeah. Because of the nature of how we always did business, you know, I had a lot of control over what that meant, you know, especially with Warped, like from cold calling a company through discussing what they may or may not want to do on the road with them, through contracting and figuring out what the spend is and, and then literally helping them to facilitate what they're going to do on the road. And then actually being the person out on the road who's like holding the hand of the, you know, 20 something year old kid that they hired to run the booth out on the road for eight weeks in the summertime, who's like never slept in a bus before and is terrified and whatever. Like that was <laughs> like, that was me from yeah. start to finish. So it was pretty easy to know from the beginning, like this is going to work. This isn't going to work. Uh, I know I can manage that. I have some questions about that. So like, you know, it, it, with, with us as a festival, brand partnerships were key. I mean, we just simply would not have been, I mean, absolutely hands down would not have been able to do what we did without corporate sponsorship. First of all, the festival would have been incredibly boring. And I think there would have been, it just wouldn't have been what it was. Right. Um, you know, there's yeah. like, it especially was, it with our fan so base. so iconic. Thanks. We tried. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, you know, when you think about these festivals, like small sites and, and kind of cramming things in and mm. so many stages, like when you think about like Euro festivals, yeah. Like I've I've been to, I've been to Reading a couple of times. So like it's massively spread out mm. and there's, other than seeing music and like hanging out and drinking, there's, I don't, there wasn't like a ton of stuff to do, you know? So like we tried to provide stuff for people to do. Cause like, we're asking you to come here all day and yeah. it's hot as hell. And you know, we want to give people something to do. The, the brand partnership piece of that works pretty incredibly like hand in hand with that format. And if you think about it, financially speaking, like we would not have been able to offer a $25, $35, $45 ticket to a festival where you're going to see potentially 100 bands inside of 12 hours. I mean, think about what that would cost (laughs) like on a normal festival. Even even one of those headlining bands could have easily charged you double that to go see them at a club. Separately, you know, when people are talking about brand partnerships, like with artists specifically, it can be really tough because it has to be, it has to be genuine, you know, or it doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. And people can sniff that shit out in a heartbeat. Like if it just doesn't make sense, fans can tell and they'll eat you alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fans are vicious. Yeah. <laughs> they can tell though and like... I I think that's such a crucial piece of advice for for artists in general. Like, if you're gonna do a brand deal, you 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 can and you should say no to to brands that don't oh, yeah. make sense. And even if it, you know, I'm sure there'll be things for loads of artists where it's financially very rewarding, but it can be really detrimental in the long run. In in my experience, if you are in a position as an artist for a brand to try to 
pitch you on something that is financially rewarding enough, Mm -hmm. then they want you bad enough to at least try to make whatever the messaging is seem authentic. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, if they want you bad enough, they they are probably not going to force you into whatever their idea of you is supposed to be as an artist. Yeah. I think artists need to remember that. They, they do have a certain amount of control. And they shouldn't be afraid to, to exercise it. Now, that's coming from someone who frequently is like, I need you to do this and just shut up and do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but again, like, I'm not, like it, that was never asking anyone to do anything that was like against their will. It was just like, I don't feel like it today. And I'm like, just get up, you know, it's different than <laughs> just do it. It's never like morally <laughs> objectionable. It was just, I'm yeah. tired. <laughs> um, yeah, look, would it be nice if, if, if a brand would just like write you a check? Sure. <laughs> but I think uh, artists need to remember that that is, again, it, that, that is a transaction and they owe something in return for that. Yeah. So whatever that is, they need to make sure they're comfortable with it. But also, like, look at what your actual needs are and are there things that you can can get from brands or get from businesses that isn't cash that will still benefit you, you know? Two last questions. Two last okay. questions. What is your track of the week? You know, the other day I sort of re... I have two and it's actually, I'm going to go off, off book. Cause I, it's, there's two. Cause I rediscovered them the other day when I was showing it to a friend, uh, uh, while she sleeps from Sheffield. Uh, ah. they're probably from, this is the six, which is their, which is like three or four records ago. That record has like, there's like six tracks. I think that they did acoustic at the end of it, rat, like there's the, the rock record. And then they took like six of those tracks and did acoustic versions and they're amazing. And nice. I love them. And uh, I was, a friend and I drank a bunch of wine the other night and we were just like playing songs for each other. <laughs> and I was like, this song's amazing. You gotta hear it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I made her listen to it. And then that and uh, um, what was it? We started, we sort of reopened like our Beartooth uh, uh, archives for whatever reason. I forget what song we were in the middle, in the middle, in the in between. The in between is the name of the song. So. Okay. Those are my two tracks. Nice. What is the best lesson that you've learned in your career so far? If you do everything that you're doing from a place of, you know, fairness and generosity and um, sort of genuine spirit, so to speak, then I think you'll you'll be okay. I think that just goes well with everything. Like what's I think it's like that old saying that's like people don't. People will rarely remember what you did, but they'll totally remember how you make them feel. Yeah, or whatever. So yeah, totally. Uh, there was a there was a long time in the industry where I was I had a, I think I had a reputation for being pretty like intimidating and like kind of scary, but um, I I've worked really hard at uh, changing that. So I feel I work hard now at like trying to like make everybody feel good about whatever the situation may be. Right. So I think all those things go together. It's been great to speak to you, Kate. I am really thankful that you took the time to talk to me and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. It's been lovely talking to you too. Have a great one. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Be sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think and I will see you next time on Backstage Pass.